everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Today, uh, you want to hang out and do some slow crafting together and use up um, what is on our desks. I'm going to actually be taking something that I made during craft chat. Uh, I took a couple, I'll be back up a little bit. I took a file folder and I basically cut it in half, trimmed it a bit, and turned it into two master boards, which you can check that video out if you want to. It's a very easy process. But basically I was just using up the scraps uh, that I have around here, um, and now I have these two things. So I thought, hey, why don't I take these two things and turn them into a bee journal? Yeah, a bee journal. You say, Pam, well, how are you gonna do a bee journal? You don't have a digi kit set with bees. You're right. But I will as of August 31st, 2022. But I was so excited about the bee pictures that I thought, you know what, I'm just going to cut it up and make a bee journal just dedicated with um, this one digi kit and incorporate it right into something right away. And also, I wanted to demonstrate some different ways to do flips. I've had a lot of questions about flips lately, how to do flips, different kinds of flips. And there's so many ways to do flips, but maybe we'll practice uh, doing some flips with these pictures. So um, I'm just going to give you a quick... Uh, let me take you down there. Um, picture of the different, um, idea of the different pictures that we're going to be working with. These are just from, I, I think I called it bees, <laughs> but it's not available yet, so don't get all excited. But um, I just uh, wanted to play with it, and I thought, you know, um, we're tail end of summer right now. It's still uh, summertime, so let's, uh, let's play with the bees. And uh, so we've got lots of things to play with here, as you can see, all sorts of different kinds of bee, bee-related things. I've got a cousin who's into bees, which is so cool, <clears throat> and um, uh, just a lot of fun pieces that you can use for bees. Some of them I kept, oh, well, you can't see, sorry. I kept them together because I might want to do foldovers and things like that. I wasn't quite sure yet, or maybe um, belly bands or a little book. I don't know. I wasn't sure yet, so I just kept a few uh, like that. Okay, so... <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, these two pieces are not the same size, so the first thing I want to do is make them the same size. And I thought these would make a nice cover because it's an interesting background. It's just collections of uh, little pieces of paper and scraps from old ledger and uh, newspaper and book pages and things like that and some artwork. And um, it's not perfect, but I think we can get it uh, to look a lot better. And I thought maybe I'd like to keep this. Um, one will be on the outside and one will actually be on the inside. So I've got manila folder layered with papers bound together, which will give me plenty of thickness for a nice small bee journal. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is try and get them the same size. I think that would be helpful place to start. So there's one edge that's straight on both of them. Let's take that edge. And I'm just gonna show you exactly everything I do. Um, Nothing fast here, nothing uh, rocket science. This is just hanging out crafting. If you want to do some crafting with me today, just grab whatever you're doing. You don't have to do this. You can do whatever you're working on, of course. And um, But I just thought this might be kind of fun to work on together. A little, a little bee journal. Okay, so there we go. Um, just lining up the bottom, which is the this end that matches. And let's go here to there. Okay, so yeah, maybe this is more of a time of using up your stuff that you have. It's a good time um, to think about stuff like that. Okay, now let's roll this around so I can cut this side. So now we have this side and that side are the same. If all aligns. Okay, so let us just double check this edge. I think I want a little bit off that edge just to where I see it all matching. Where's the line? There's the line. Okay, there. That would be good. It's not perfect. Oh, well. And here we go. Can you see that? Can you see all that? Pretty much all of it, huh? Let me back up a little more. Okay, because we're doing all the big cuts right now. I'm a craft knife girl. I do like to use my craft knife a lot. I also like to use my guillotine cutter. That's fine, too. So now I only have one edge, which is not uh, flush. So let's get you flush which will be you, so I think I'm gonna trim you off right on that line there. Everybody looks okay, everybody's looking equidistant as far as this girl can get it, okay? So we should have two pieces together. Now, anytime you bring two pieces together and you want to make a, um, 
if you want to make a spine in the middle, there will be, when you fold them up, there will be some buckling. So what I'm going to do is actually give it its shape first, fold it, and then adhere it together so that we can do any extra little trimming at the end, if, just in case we need to do that. I think I'm just going to lay down some basic, um, this is Scotch Create glue stick, permanent glue stick, if anybody's curious, it's just my favorite glue stick. Just a light wasp of it, wasp, ha 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 ha, bee journal wasp, get it, no, sorry. <laughs> a wisp, I meant wisp, wasp, Ooh, good grief. <laughs> okay, just to kind of tack it together so they don't run around on each other. Now, I think the easiest thing to do is when we're trying to figure out our dimensions for our bee journal is, let's just fold the whole thing in half, okay? And that's going to tell us where the middle is without any measuring. Amazing, isn't it? I know, I love that. Okay, but they're kind of thick, so they want to they wanna do their own thing, and you've got to tell them, no. I think I want this on the outside. I'm going to change that. Okay, going the other way, going the other way. See, they are already wanting to come apart and do their own thing, which I knew. I knew going in that was going to happen, and I'm okay. I'm okay with it. Just let it be. Let it be. <laughs> let it be. Just let it find itself, find its place. Some of these are going to come apart. Yep, I know. I know. It's all right. It's all okay. All right. Now, we have a, we have a, a center. I know what I was reaching for. My bone folder. My favorite tool. Okay to give us the crispness of the spine. Don't worry about things come apart here and there because we can cover that or we can glue it back down or we can cover it with lace or, or uh, material or something. It's okay, it's okay. And um, <clears throat> I think I would like, I can build a spine into it or I could just leave it as this kind of a spine. I could do that, that's a very simple kind of spine. I think we did that the other day, but let me let me just build a little baby spine into it. Okay, so I'm gonna go maybe an eighth of an inch to the right of all this. Okay, now let's get organized. Let's get straight, that's the most important thing because if you're gonna draw a line, you want it to be straight. Okay, there's one there. Okay, I'm just using my bone folder to make my thing. Let's see. Oh, that was like a quarter of an inch. Holy mackerel, that was a fat one. Um, I think I want to do about half of that amount over, really. Okay, well, let's just bring it in a little bit. I don't even think I did a straight line. Look at that. Huh. Okay, we're going to do less than that and pretend that never happened. That's right. And now that's better. That's like, a, like an eighth of an inch away from the midline. And now we're going to do that eighth of an inch away from the midline. There we go. Okay, there we have that. Now, I think it would be a good idea to do some folds upon those lines. So let's uh, go ahead and... Why do I seem like I'm, I'm, I'm all on the one side? Am I all on the one side? I am all on the one side. Look at that. Okay, we're going to go do that again. And we're going to now put the line on the other side of the middle, which is where the initial intent... See, this is what really happens. Um, where initial intent was meant... Okay, we want to be at least a quarter, uh, an eighth of an inch away from the spine. Oh, I have three lines on that side. Okay, oh, goodness gracious. Okay, that's the way it goes sometimes. That's, that's reality. Okay, now we have a little, we have the middle. I should maybe fold so you can see. Where's the middle? I don't even know where the middle is anymore. Okay, let's do this. This will make life easier for everybody concerned and myself. <coughs> Get that, get a nice fold, get your bone folder, find middle. Okay, make sure your little page is aligned and everything. And then uh, mark it with a dauber so you can see the darn thing. I think that's gonna make life a lot easier. Okay, there we go, we have a middle. All right, okay. Is that our middle? I don't know. Okay, let's fold it up again. It will be when we trim it, so it's okay. So don't worry about it. Just get a nice center fold that you can live with. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> and then I'm going to fold up a quarter of an inch on this side. No, an eighth of an inch on this side. Okay, let me just go this way. Okay, okay. It's a little chubby. You know what I mean? It's a little chubby. That's okay. That's okay. Just giving it a little bit of a spine. 
just so we have some room for the papers to be in there. More than that? Okay, how much have we got? Not much. We could use a little more than that. Okay, we're going to go for more spine. All right, here we go. Okay. All right. I've got like 17 lines here. I'm just going to, I'm going to make a spine. Let's make a spine, Sally. For goodness sake, make the spine. No, oh, look how cockeyed that is. Oh, Lordy may hold on to your hearts. Hold on to your hearts. Okay. Okay, now I think we have it. Okay, there is a spine in there. Now, let me show you what we got. I got that. Okay, with much rustling and muscling, I have that. And that is a spine, and I can live with that. Now, what do I have here? I have non-alignment, but that's okay, because I can instantly make alignment by just trimming it off. Uh, so make sure your spine is um, 90 degrees, and just refold your spine... Okay, the two things, a couple of times. Don't worry if little pieces come off, it's okay. Yeah. So we're gonna, we're gonna get that all together. I just want you to make sure that those are in there. Well, you are garbage, you can go over there. All right, so now we are back here and we have a nice little spine. Okay, so now we're gonna take our spine and make sure that it's all horizontal. Okay, horizontal. Oh, did I? Yeah, I meant perpendicular. Perpendicular. Okay. So it looks like a book. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Now we're going to take this. I'm going to put it here. And now we're going to do the final trim. Yes. Yes, we are. Yes, yes, we are. Okay. Here we go. Nice sharp blade. Makes everything so much easier. Okay, now I just have a little bit of glue holding all of this together. But I think we are pretty good. We have our cover. That was pretty um, painless. Painful. <laughs> painful. That was painful. Who are we kidding? Um, it doesn't always have to be that painful, but it's not that bad. But I think what I am going to do to make life a lot easier, and um, I do encourage you, to, if you have not tiptoed into the sewing world, to consider this as one of those example projects where sewing can make your life a lot easier. I am so scared that I just said that. Why do I say that? Because you know that is the harbinger of everything that can possibly go wrong. Okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew around the outside with a zigzag stitch. This is my plan. This is what I'm going in. I'm going in deep with this plan. Okay, clearing the decks here so I can move my sewing machine over. And oh, I don't really have a lot of thread on this. Uh, thing, but let's see. Let's just see. Okay, bring you around. Bring you around. Okay, let me try and put you there. Not want to move it too much because bad things happen. Um, okay. Oh, let's see how much is left on the. Yeah, there should be lots in there. I think I have enough to finish this, so I'm just going to go around and do a zigzag stitch to seal the edges, so that my my edges are sealed and I am good. Okay, I'm putting that down. I'm turning it on. Trying to find my foot pedal. It's down here somewhere. Sunny moved it. Okay, ready? I'm going to increase. I'm going to go to number four, which on this machine is the zigzag stitch, and I'm going to make it to. I'm going to make it a 3.0 um, stitch width. Okay, uh, length, length. Okay, here we go. Pam is now sewing. I just go slow, and you can go off one edge. You can actually like make that little foot hit the center. Just as long as half is on and half is off, you should be good. And this is where I wouldn't bat a ram through. I would just take your time and sew, and everything's going to be okay. Really, for junk journal making, if you have the talent of sewing already, then you need no instruction from me. But if you are a newbie or novice sewer, one more, now turning. Um, really straight stitch and see, you know, that's coming out weird and I have no idea why because I am a novice sewer. Uh, probably has something to do with tension and all that stuff, but I think it's still going to look pretty cool because it just, it just will. Um, as long as the string doesn't break and if the string breaks, what do you do? You, you re-thread the string and you just keep on going. Oh, hang on, I'm bunching up too much here. 
Okay, hold on. Okay, we're going. It's nice to have clear space behind your sewing machine. That way you don't run into anything and it doesn't throw your, your beautiful straight lines off. Ha ha ha. Um, I really have straight lines when I'm sewing. See, I'm getting some strange version of zigzag stitch here, which I'm going to call my artistic flair. And that's just the way the universe went today. And that's the way it goes sometimes. Okay, so now this little guy, he's peely uppy and he wants to just be goofy. So we are going to glue him back down, but we're probably going to reinforce him with something because I don't think he's, he doesn't like being on the spine by himself, so skinny and all. It's a lot of pressure for him in life. And maybe he's going to want some friends, friendly assistance to help him stay in place. And we have ideas for him. So don't you worry, you little blue darn piece of paper. We're going to get you to stay all together and everything's going to be dandy. So, yeah, if you've got sewing machine fear, sewing machine phobia, I want you to know it's okay to come in. The water is warm. It's okay to waddle in. I highly suggest getting an inexpensive one. Uh, go down to your Goodwill or your favorite trustworthy thrift shop and say, listen, I just need a machine that sews. I don't need anything fancy. I'm going to be sewing through paper, maybe a little bit of fabric here and there. I don't need a million fancy stitches. I got 20 bucks in my pocket, burning a hole. Can, can you guide me here? And, you know, odds are somebody who works in there is going to be seamstress Sally. And, and she's going to grab you by the hand, maybe gently, and maybe forcefully. She's going to say, oh, I have the perfect machine for you. Yes, come over, come over to me. I will show you exactly what you want to do. What are you making? Junk channels? Fabulous, fabulous. I've, I've, I've never heard of them. Can you tell me all about them? <laughs> That's probably what's going to happen. Okay, so now I'm going to slide you back over here. Okay, okay, okay. All right. And so now we have this nice little cover. Yeah. I know, right? Very easy to do. Okay, um, so I just grabbed some general papers. I had a pile of these. These are just uh, regular printer paper that I spritzed some coffee dye or some inks through just to have some fun one day. You probably saw me doing this a while back, and I thought this would be a great journal to put these into. So let's go ahead and just measure up a bunch. Probably going to have to do some trimming here. <coughs> If you do a nine by six journal, then you can just fold eight and a half by 11s in half and they'll magically fit inside and there's no trimming really required. I don't have that. What do I actually have? Okay, let's see. I have, uh, cause it just didn't go that way. I have like seven and a half tall by five and a half, no, five and three quarters wide. I don't know, I just do, that's what happened. Okay, so let's just fold a bunch of these. They're all just, Okay, oh, we got some different things in here. Okay, we'll just put you aside for now. Didn't know you were in there. And let me say, then we're going to do a one signature. One, two. I like the colors in these because I thought they um, uh, related to summer and pretty flowers and things like that. I don't know what I was saying. I just thought they were pretty. Okay, one. Let's mix them up a bit. Two, three, four, five, six. Thirty-seven, eight. I, I like these wrinkles. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, well, let's just go with fourteen because that's what I have. Okay. Well, coffee beans? We'll just stick you in the middle somewhere. Okay, we'll do this one. Oh, okay, that's fine. Okay, so just aligning all of these. Okay folding. There we go. Folding, aligning, folding, folding, aligning. A lot of folding, a lot of aligning. Guessing middle, guessing middle. Don't have to be exact because we're going to do trimming. Looking for bone folder. Looking for bone folder. Okay. So this is really just how to make a little booklet with what you've been working on on your desk. Sometimes you just got to do that. Okay. So here we go. Now, Let's put this in where we would like this to live. See how I'm, let me show you. Oh, that's a little close, back up. About a quarter of an inch up off the bottom, I think is a good place, okay. Now the width is not bad. I mean, we really don't need to do a whole lot of trimming on the width, we could actually just leave it. it it's completely, can you see that? It's completely encased in the journal, but if we want the flush edge, you can flush, you can flush edge that, and maybe I'll show you how to do that. The, um, I would say about a quarter inch up, and then I'm going to make a line here 
this is going to tell me, are we aligned? We look like we're pretty aligned. Okay, we, we want, you have to be inside of that, okay? So now, no line, no line at all. Look at that. That's amazing how you can use a pen and it doesn't work. Okay. Okay, so that is, it has to be at least a quarter of an inch in from that. So let's just take this here. Now you can paper clip this all together so it doesn't run around on you and stuff like that. I'm just going to do it. Okay. All right. I'm going to go about a quarter of an inch in. Okay. I'm just going to draw another line. Why not? Okay. And now I'm going to take my craft knife. And I don't know if they sell these exact ones anymore, but any of these craft knives that break off at the end, um, they're so darn handy. And the more you work, no, I'm always afraid to say this. The more you work with them, the easier they are to work with. And you kind of get it about how hard to push and where, like you want a uh, cork back ruler so things don't slide around so it's nice and safe for you. I think that I'm, I'm already through. And if your blade is nice and sharp, it will cut through like butter and then you'll have these lovely scraps that you can figure out what to do with later. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so I think I am gonna flush butt this. Okay, see how we have bird beak? We have bird beak because these middle ones get shoved further that way. So we have bird beak. But I think I'm just gonna flush cut just to make it all pretty pants. Um, and this is really a slow crafting day. So, you know, we can, I can like, you know, batter ram through this and, and make it all fast and everything. But sometimes I want, I want you to see what really happens behind the scenes. Like this is like me just crafting day in the crafters craft shop, you know, just hanging out here, making something, have really no, no idea where this is all going. Just playing with the stuff, you know, and I think that that might be a lot of us. Um, so let's just see where we can take this. And, and it's nice to use the stuff that we've made before, you know, like pull it back into in existence and just, just use it up. Okay, so now, okay, there's the other side of it. Now it's a very functional fold. We like that. Okay, now, see that looks like the center, but it's not because I trimmed it. So that's actually the left side of the spine. Let me just make the right side so you can see it. Maybe I just do this. I don't know why I'm doing this. I should, probably shouldn't do this. Don't do that, Pam. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, this is the left side of the spine. I'm just going to say that. So I'm going to put th three dots down because I'm going to do a three-hole pamphlet stitch. You could also staple this in. This is a, not a big um, fat journal, but you could certainly staple it in. I'm going to put one dot there one dot in the middle and the one about an inch from the bottom you can measure these if it you know really you know warms your heart to do that you're not going to do it no i'm not um they're never going to be exact with me but i pretty darn close that's okay that's okay here i'm bringing you know who in crop dial two big bite okay just pay attention to what is your top this is my top the 57 is near the top okay that's my front and my top okay so I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it, turn this on its side. I'm going to put this exactly where I want it to live. And what do I mean by that? I mean by I have a quarter inch showing on the bottom. Getting closer. A quarter inch showing on the top, okay? And a quarter inch there. So everybody is nestled right where it needs to be. Okay, so now that, I, that you are going to be sitting exactly where I want you to live, I'm going to take this pen again, yes. And you see those three dots that I made? Okay, I'm moving it. Okay, let's zoom you in so you can really see close. Okay, see that one dot? It's there. I'm going to line that dot up with the paper and I'm gonna make the dot on the paper at the same spot. Same thing here, same thing here, same thing here. Okay, now remember what your top is. Don't forget this is your top. Oh, I can't see. Don't forget this is your top. When the book closes like that, there's my 57. Okay. All right. So now you, you can, um, if you want to go get um, paper clips and stuff, it's not a bad idea. You can totally do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it back on itself. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's put it aside. I'm going to punch my three holes in this. This is my crocodile tube big bite. I'm going to use the one eighth, can you see that one eighth hole punch number? It's the one in the middle, not all the way to the right, not all, all the way to the left, but the it's it's in the middle. It, it should say one eighth. 
And then you're just going to put those. Okay, that's going to make the little arm, little arm come down. See that that's the little arm. This is the 3 16th big fat one, not that one. Okay, go to the 1 8th. Okay, and then punch your three holes. I'm looking from the side. Everybody says, what are you doing? How can you see where you punch your hole? I don't look from the top. I look from the side. Okay, go right over the hole, right over the hole. Okay, take, take a second, measure, like a line, and then punch. And it's very easy to do. Two, and then turn it around. You can use an awl or a needle or something like that to punch the holes too. But uh, this thing, I think... Once you use it, it's hard to go back. Honestly, it's hard to go back. Okay, so this is the way my book was sitting, my, my signature inside. I have opened it up and folded it back on itself. Everybody asks, why do you fold it back on itself? So that I can use that valley to guide the 1 8 punch right over the hole. And it helps me guide it so I'm not wandering around. And you really want the, let's say your hole is not right on the fold line. Punch the fold line. More, it's more important than the hole, than the dot. Yeah. So, yeah, because sometimes we put a, little, a dot a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right or the fold line. It happens. But, but use your fold line as the, uh, the main navigator. And then we are pretty much done the creation of this journal. Let me just get a, um, okay, and let me just get a needle, a big, big eyed needle for blind as bat Sally here. And this is just waxed linen thread of some sort. Um, I'm using a color to me that looks like beeswax honeycomb. I just thought, I don't know, I thought that looked well with the, the theme. And you just do three. So you go one, two, three, and then... You cut it. Where's my scissors? I had them right here. Little baby scissors. Okay, get those. Okay, here we go. And cut. And that is all you need with that. So that's going to give you plenty of thread. You're not going to be short. It's kind of the golden. Three times the height of your journal will give you enough string to do the three whole pamphlet stitch. You can do five whole pamphlet stitch. You know, 12. What? I don't know. Just do as many pamphlet stitches as you want. I like three. Three seems to work. Doesn't matter whether it's a big or a small journal. Seems to function. I have my areas clasped. Okay, so what's going on here? Now, do you notice something? See, I'm like way far away here. And, and something's not right. Now, immediately that tells me something's rotated. So I'm going to go like this. Oh, look at that. It magically fits now. Now that should be, no, what did I do? I must have measured it upside down. See, this happens. That's reality. Yep. So now my whole, my whole journal is upside down. Let's see. Okay, that's all right. Let me just make sure I can get it in the middle somewhere. Because it's an abstract design, so we might be okay. Yes, 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 yes. It's like been 100 years since I made a journal or something. Okay. So now I'm looking at it and everything is lining well. This is now going to be my new up. My 57 is no longer here. No, my 57 is over there. Well, I could turn the whole journal upside down. I don't know. I'll have to look at my pictures in here. I think they're all random, so it doesn't matter. But let's just go through the middle. And this is our three-hole pamphlet stitch going from the back now through the top. Okay, leave a little tail. Leave a little tail. Come through the bottom and then up through the middle. It's a pretty easy stitch. I think I'm just doing the whole thing upside down. I think it's fine. Um, I'm going to see how silly all of that was. But that is probably one of the biggest things that comes into play when you're making journals is everything all of a sudden goes upside down or it doesn't align. It's because something's twisted around. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here we go. Let's look at what we have. We have a our bridge string, which should be on top. Then we have one angel wing to the right, one angel wing to the left, and this we're going to pull snug. We're going to double check and make sure that we're through the correct holes, which we are. There's only three here to work with, so it's not too hard to get. You won't get confused very easily. Make sure your angel wings are about the same length. It just makes it easier for tying purposes. And then right over left and left over right gives a knot, a lot of might. Okay, right. Oh, that's it's already ha always hard to do the opposite way because your brain just doesn't work that way. And I always throw one more in in case I messed up. Yeah, because somehow that seems to lock everything in. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm not going to, I'm not going to trim my tail yet because I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but you can certainly trim the tail to be inside your book or out, you know, if you want it to dangle or you want to have something to dangle below this or maybe a flat charm on the inside, totally can do that. Okay, so let us look at our book again. 
I think everything is actually fine. It was just me that was rotated. So, so if I look at it from this perspective, there's my 57. There's the top of my journal. Here's the pattern that I expected to find on this side. And I just had rotated the entire thing. So if you find that that happens to you, there you go. It happens to me too. All the time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, you just take your bone folder and you train the paper. Okay, that's going to make your book lay flatter nicely. Okay, and then you come here and you train the paper. Go slow. You can go from both ways. Just give it that nice little fold room. Okay, and you are good. And you have the cutest little journal already. Maybe you want to pull your tails down because that was the plan initially. Okay, and there we have... Let me just back up a little bit. Okay, a little bit so you can see the whole journal. Okay, so now, um, okay, we have created a little journal. And now we're just going to go ahead and, and put some fun things on here. So let's find, what would we like to put on the front of this little bit? I mean, we could do a lot of things. Let's just try some on for size. I mean, there's like, you know, this is, that's a very pretty picture. I like that one. Um, that's a nice flowery bumble uh, bee sort of um, uh, picture. That's very nice. We do like that one. Yeah. Okay. So those are the ones that are together. And let's just do, uh, we'll do a quick look through. Just a big B on the front would look really cool too, right? Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, and maybe one of those word ones. Well, that's pretty too. That's nice. Okay, you're a contender. Okay, our beekeeping sisters. Isn't that neat? Okay, so something like that. We could put that on the front. We have a few more of these. Let me see. Let me just do a quick th look through. Uh, we have our roots. We could do like a layer design. The bee journal. Oh, that's cute. The bee journal, something like that. We'll put three on there, maybe two. The bee journal, that actually says what it is. That's kind of cool, liking, liking that. Um, all right, let's just take a quick peek through what other, your contender. Yeah. Bees, oh, that's pretty. I'm gonna put you inside. Okay, oh, little bumblebees. Oh, that's pretty too, I like that. Oh, this is a very nice one. Hmm, hmm. Maybe this one. Yeah, maybe that one. Okay, we're going to do that one. All right. So that is the decision that has been made. Let's see, do we want to do some inking? We could do some inking. It'd look very nice, right? Okay. Let's see if we have enough ink on here. No. Nope. Going to need a little extra. I think this is going to be a longer video if you want to hang out. Um, this is vintage photo and this is just some spritzer water. I'm just going to spritz this like this off to the side so I don't spritz my work. There, it's wet now. Okay, just kind of waking up my vintage photo. Yeah, okay. And that really does see. You can also spritz your dauber because um, there's often a lot of uh, ink soaked up into your dauber. It's amazing. There, there really is a lot of ink to work with with these projects. And okay, just going around. You could do some fussy cutting scissor work around here. You could use a fancy scissor edge. You could do some layering. I think I, because of the uh, prettiness of the background, I'm not going to do too much with layering, although you can, but I just kind of like that look. And But I do think I am going to put that there. Um, I think I am. Should I sew around the edges? It might look cute, you know? I could do that. Um, all right, let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna go over here. Okay, sorry. We're going over there again. Okay, <coughs> all right. I'm moving this over. Yeah, Pam is sewing again. Everybody hold your breath. Pam is sewing again. Okay, maybe I'm gonna not do a zigzag. I'm just gonna do a straight stitch because that's your other best friend in junk journal world, a straight stitch. Oh, look at how now, yeah, we're like going fast because I want it to look a little messy because um, I think it looks kind of cool and, and just wave it a little on purpose. Yeah, why not? Because it, 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 it has charm. Okay, here we go. And, and you can even go around twice and give it the twice or doodle. You know, have you ever seen that? That looks pretty too. Um, maybe we'll try that just so you can see. Okay, now if you're going to do the twice or doodle, Try and crisscross over the one that you went. So you're kind of doing like a wave action. Yeah, this is really fancy town. But the nice thing about it is you don't have to be able to sew a straight line, which evades me eternally. 
um, but this whole wave thing looks like proper intense, like, yeah, now we're talking. And then off the edge. Okay. There we go. Okay, so then you end up with something like that, which I think that looks really pretty. Isn't that cool? I just think it's really cool. Um, and I love things that are simple and cool. Um, and we can, we, can, we can do more complicated stuff. Um, but I think there's lots of folks who will, will show you all the other, like, complicated stuff, and I just want to be your happy, easy place. <laughs> Simple place. Um, let's do one more. Let's go around this. We'll do the same thing. Okay, here we go. And we're sewing, and we're sewing, and we're sewing, and we're fast. That means we're not having a straight line. Because that's how it goes. Okay, there around the corner. What was that? That just... I saw something? Oh, you're a lizard on my window. Okay, that's all right. And here we go. Da-da, 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 da Okay. And up the side, and then we're going for round two. Do, do the wave action, the wave action, the wave action. See, and I'm not sweating. I'm like going to break Grandma's famous quilting sewing machine because this is just some sewing machine I got at Walmart one day. And I figured, well, if I break it, it's on me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, don't break Granny's machine. Um... There's some beautiful sewing machines out there. I, I know nothing about them. Um, so I will uh, disappear into the woods with my, my simple sewing machine. Oh, I like that. See, I just think that's pretty. You know what I mean? I mean, it doesn't really need any more than that. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and glue these down so we can call the cover done. Now, you don't have to do the cover first. Um, and I'm using Fabrifix glue, if anybody's curious. And I have it in a Sugar Bells icing piping bottle just for thin uh, stream delivery so that I don't use too much glue. It's not cheap. You know, I know, I get that. Um, if you only make a journal every once in a while, you don't have to invest in these really, you know, expensive glues and stuff. Uh, it just takes a little longer to dry, and maybe you want to clamp things or, or paper clip them or bulldog clip them together so they, don't, they get a chance to dry. But if you're cranking out stuff and you get all excited and you just want to move on to the next thing, sometimes it's a good investment. Really, that's what it boils down to. Uh, you can make journals out of anything, you know, and any glue. I have flour and water, and you're probably going to, you can make a journal out of that. Maybe one day I'll try that just for fun. Um, but uh, there we go. And it's nice, the, uh, when you put the glue on the thread, it gives it a little extra texture. Now you could line it, you could do it an on angle, but I think I'm just going to line. It's going to be simple. Simple Sally today. Yeah. Okay. There we go. All right. So. Now, um, I still do need to do something with this spine because it's, you know, a little rough on the edge. That's okay, though. We can, we can put something there. But let's go ahead and open the journal. And maybe let's place some things. Now, we said we were going to do some flips. Okay. So, I think, well, let's do two things first. Let's put a pocket on the front and the back just so we, we have some anchorage. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like that a lot. Oh, that would be nice. Let's see. Oh, that's cool. That's nice. I like that. Yeah, I think I'm going to put that there. Maybe... I could use it as a tuck, just glue it on one side and just put things here. Or I could do it as a corner tuck, glue them in L shape and have big things sit in here very uh, comfortably. Um, probably a little too wide this way. I'd have to trim it down, but I don't think... I don't know, maybe I want something different because the first, it looks a little like the first one. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but maybe I want to use one of these colorful guys. Just to have a little pizzazz, you know? Okay, let's do that. All right, and I'm just going to, you know, where's my old, fa old fashioned, old school here? Scissors. I'm just going to, I'm just going to cut this. It's pretty easy to cut. Don't wiggle, Pam. Just stay straight. You can do it. Okay. Now you could come along and sew all of these as well, but um, you don't have to. I mean, that's, sewing's not mandatory. It's just, uh, and it's nice to use it as an accent. Sometimes, I don't know. I just think a little bit of sewing is nice. Um, you can, you can do a lot of sewing and that's a, just a different look. Okay, there we go. All right, here we go. And the first one's down. And you could do inking too, but I think I'm not going to do heavy inking on the inside because there's a lot of background color going on here. We have uh, music paper, uh, old ledger paper. There's a lot of prettiness already. I don't want to get in there too much and, and uh, you know, do those sorts of things. Okay, so here, what do we have on the back? Oh, that's what, that would be cute. It has some of the, the um, peach colors in it. That might be nice. <coughs> You would be nice as well. You're, you're actually this way. Okay, maybe we'll do it. 
Okay, here we go. Well, I was going to do you as a... Yeah, I have I have plans for you. Let's not do you. Um, I have others. I have others. Let me see. Oh, you're cute. You could totally do you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, we'll do you. You're here. Step on up. All right, here we go. So things can come together relatively quickly at this point, but I do want to take a little time just to show you some little basic flips, which are kind of fun to do. Okay, so we have that. What was that? Oh, just a random piece of paper. Just saw something going flying across the room. Like, what on earth was that? Um, okay, so this is very pretty. Uh, okay, so there's a lot of different ways that you can do flips. And you can do them with material, or you can do them with washi tape, or you can do them with um, uh, paper. Um, totally up to you. Now, we do have a lot of these extra pieces here, so I thought maybe take one of these extra pieces. I'm just going to use it as a flip top. Yeah, just a little flip top up here. Okay, so I am going to, I can glue it, I can sew it, I can staple it on. Let's just put a little bead of glue there. Okay, let's just put you here. Okay. Align you. Okay. And I think I'm just going to fold you in half. I'm going to trim you off. This is just a basic little, what I call a, uh, the drawbridge flip. Okay. I'm going I'm to glue that down there. Yeah, that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to glue that down there. It's a very simple, basic way to do a flip. Okay. I'm going to use my fingers here. I'm just going to smoosh it to the end, make sure my ends are good. Okay, then I'm going to decide where I want this. Maybe here. Maybe I want it here. I'm just going to glue that down. I already have a fold. I'm just going to reinforce my fold so I feel good about my fold. My fold is there. This flips up. Okay, and then you have space to write underneath. You have space to write here, and that's a very easy way to do. Oh, I got an ant. Hello. <sighs> Goodbye. Okay, here's a very small sugar ant. We have those sometimes here. Okay, um, now I think what I would like to do is just a small piece of something. Let's keep in the trend of using what we have. We have a lot of little pieces of extra trim paper here. Maybe I could put a little bridge there just to give that an edge. Can you see that? You know what I mean? That looks kind of pretty. Yeah, I like that. All right, so let's do this. Let's just come along here. You could also do this with fabric trim. Um, okay. Well, let's just take a nice end. It's a nice end. And we'll just put you down right there. It's not on the fold, so it's not going to do anything weird. Okay. And just bring it right to the edge. There we go. And then we just come on over here and we trim it off. There we go. And um, I would just reinforce this maybe with a fingernail or a bone folder. These are kind of like bone folders, you know, after a while. Okay. Back you up so you can see what on earth's going on. And we have a little flip. If you want to put a little flip indication, you can do that. If you don't want to use a bumpy bling, you can come along and use, um, like just take a, a little marker or something and you just put a little dot and that gives indication. You can also, um, I don't know, bigger. There. Um, you could also use a, um, you could punch a hole, you could put a little, a tab there, something like that, but just to, to give it the indication of something going on there. There, there. Now I've given indication of something going on there. And you could do more decorating, but that's just a very basic flip. All right, so let's maybe go to the back. I'm going to uh, disperse my uh, flips a little bit so we have different flippage going on. Now I think what we're going to do is the same concept, except we're going to take the paper and just glue it a different way. Um, okay, so I'm going to also take one of these, not the same color. I think I'd like a, yeah, maybe... Do have a brown one? Here's a brown one. Oh, we got the one with the coffee bean. That's kind of cool. And this is something like a, a honeycomb press or something. I don't even know what it is exactly, but it had something to do with bees. And it was kind of cool. Um, 
So let's take another piece of the paper from the trim and we're going to glue it on the side here. Okay, same concept, but now we're just gluing it on the side. So glue it on the side, glue it on the side. And I'm going to do that. Can you see that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Lining it up, lining it up, very nice. I'm just going to fold it in. I'm not going to abut it right against itself. I'm going to leave a little breathing room in there, just, just for extra wiggle room. You can totally abut it. That's fine. But this is just another way to do it. Okay. So now what do you have? You have uh, this little flapperoo. Okay, so this little flapperoo, I'm going to glue on the back side here, right where the fold is. Okay. We'll move it up a little north a little bit. Okay, and you could use glue stick or something here, but I like a good strong fiber fixture. Anything that's moving just feels safe and like it's going to stay put. You could also sew it on or staple it on. Those are options. So we take that and put it to the fold. You can take it all the way to the top if you want. Maybe we will. And let's just see if everything aligned nicely or did we go all hoggly woggly. No, we are fine. We are fine. Okay, let's just uh, realign our fold so it's in happy place. And that now we have this. Yeah. And then we have things we can do with that. Um, so that's certainly the same concept. You're just flipping to the right. You could do the same thing on the left. And uh, so let's go in the center somewhere. How about here? And maybe we'll do one down. This one I call, which, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. This one Okay, remember, this is the car trunk. I call that the car trunk fold. This one is just a door. <laughs> and this one is going to be the drawbridge because it's going to come down like this. Yeah. All right, so let's just pick another. Um, oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, that would be a nice drawbridge. Okay, same concept, very easy. And it, like I said, you can use um, material. Uh, you can use different kinds of paper. I just happen to have this paper right here, so I thought it would be nice to use. And let's just go ahead and put that down. And these are just pretty colors that all sort of marry together. Okay. And have that there. Let's just make, let's try and get it about the same width, you know. Make it look like it's going to be even. What are we doing here? It's not even. Okay, there we go. That's more even. Okay. And then fold it up. Let's get rid of the excess first. Too much to play with here. So just taking this slow. These are the basics of flips. These are not fancy, but they are fun nonetheless. Okay. And I did leave a little bit of room, although you can take it all the way up, but I like to leave a little bit of room. Now I want to show you something different. You have choice. You can certainly go to the other side and glue it here, or you can just glue it right onto this page, <clears throat> which I'll show you that I'm going to do that here. So nice crisp flip, taking our glue of choice. Yeah, so pretty. I don't know. It's just fun to use up stuff that is right in front of you. It saves time running around getting all that other stuff out. Doesn't it though? Yeah. Okay. There we go. And now we have the drawbridge comes down the drawbridge. So you can write here, you can write all in here. You can put surprise pictures. You can put um, <coughs> little bee imagery here if you want to do that to surprise the person. Oh, look at me surprising you. I'm, I'm so surprising. <laughs> you know, right? Oh my gosh, it's already 48 minutes. Okay, so let's just go ahead. I've sh shown you three extremely basic um, flips. Now another, okay, another very basic flip is to use an envelope. If you have small envelopes or big envelopes or colored envelopes or plain envelopes, or you can make your own envelopes, um, they're all good. But let's say, let's go a quarter of the way in and maybe we want to use an envelope as a flip. And the nice thing is it already has a fold. So you can do this many different ways. Maybe I'll do it this way. We're gonna use the envelope as the one flip appendage here, the flap, we're using the flap. Okay, and it's a good idea to bring your glue to the edges like that, that's good to do. And I'm just gonna put this down here, I'm gonna abut it. 
um, right in the spine area. So I want to make sure that my envelope fits, and it does. So that is good. And that's pretty. This envelope has some pretty design on it already, which, which is very nice. And then on this side, maybe I want to put a uh, B picture or something like that on here. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I like that. But we have others. We have others. Um, you're an upsy downsy. That looks kind of nice. Okay, let me put you here. All right. So I think I might do this as a two-parter. I don't like to generally do two-parters, but I just this video is getting a little bit long, and I don't want to keep you stuck here for an eternity. Um, but I would like you to see the process. So I think I'm going to wrap it up here as I'm doing this one. And then we'll do a little bit more decorating in the next round of this since this is kind of like uh, just, you know, hanging out, uh, crafting with each other. And I think what I'm going to do is turn this into a pocket. I'm just going to do a C-shaped a glue on here. And then I'm going to tuck something fun in there, which I don't know what it is yet, but um, just something fun. So what does this envelope give you? It gives you a surface to decorate on this side, but it also gives you a pocket. Now you can also decorate this, and you can also tuck magnificent things in here, which is kind of cool. And I love the old weathering of the old, like it's the glue from 1940s or something that came through that shows on old envelopes. Um, now, <clears throat> Mr. Flufferpants, do you have something to say? I, I, I do, I have something to say. I would, I would have a very big report today. Okay. All right, I'm coming in, Mother. Rotate me. I wrote, okay, I'm coming in, coming in. Here I am. Hello, everybody. It's sunshine, and I would just like to say that <coughs> everything is fine. Yes, there's no great concerns. All is well. And the fact that we are all here together paper crafting it's a very good sign. Yes. Happy crafting. Okay. Well, that was very deep today. Yes, that was, that was extremely deep. Thank you, son. We truly appreciate your input. Um, okay. So um, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. If you have not signed up for my free monthly emailed newsletter, make sure you do. Why would you want to do that? Because you get a free digital image emailed to you every month, a checklist of supplies, a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it. And you can tuck that into the front of your journals to deal with bewildered face when you give somebody a junk journal. And um, also page list of ideas. And I also have a, a set of, of a little video series called Never Endless Page Ideas um, for your junk journal where I take one idea and I use it four different ways. And you can see how to do, um, how to uh, decorate your junk journal pages with many, many ideas. And I have an Etsy shop where you're going to find journals and bundles and digi kits and fundles and my print and mail option. If you don't like to print out digi kits, I will do that for you. And also, um, I have an Amazon shop. If you're looking for favorite tools and supplies, I try and put the links in there to the products that I use that I find helpful. Um, I have a merchandise shop if you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise uh, and you would like a gift for yourself or a friend or a family member or a fellow crafter um, I have t-shirts sweatshirts zipped hoodies um, mugs toads all sorts of fun things for you to check out and um, you can find me on Pinterest Twitter LinkedIn Facebook come and join our Facebook group we're having fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges it's called the paper outpost Facebook group and um, just make sure you answer all the questions and then agree to the rules and you will be signed up and then uh, you can partake in all the fun you're also welcome to lurk and just hang out and um, uh, remember most of all that fun can be simple and hey have lots of fun with what you got on your desk right now um, I guess that's my biggest challenge for you today let's see if you can play with what you got right in front of you let's see what you can make take care everybody have fun happy crafting and I'll talk to you next time bye bye